Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and hello you new people. Today I'm going to be showing you the Urban Decay Alice Through the Looking Glass collection. It is made up of a limited edition collector's palette that is $60. This has 20 almost full-size eyeshadows. They're 0.04 ounces each. There are also five lipsticks which are 18 individually. I'm going to go ahead and run through the palette so you can check it out. So first let me show you the palette. The packaging is gorgeous. When you open it up, it has a mirror. It says, I'm not strange, weird, off, nor crazy. My reality is just different than yours. And this is said by the Cheshire Cat. If you look down here, it says, I know who I was when I got up this morning, but I must have changed several times since then, which I kind of like that. That was said by Alice. So if you open up the palette, it has basically this psychedelic design and this butterfly. See if you can see that. I think it's really pretty. And then you can pull out the eyeshadows. So for this palette, each vertical column is basically inspired by a character. And the first column over here is inspired by Alice. The next column is Mad Hatter. In the middle, we have the White Queen, Marana. Next, we have the Red Queen, which is Erasabeth. For the last row, we have Time. So I'm gonna go ahead and run through swatches for you. All of my swatches are on primer. On my blog, you can see swatches on primer and bare skin. So Looking Glass is a pale pink demi matte. Reflection is a soft peachy orange matte. Dormouse is a warm orangey brown matte. Metamorphosis, I believe this is inspired by the Caterpillar who was voiced by Alan Rickman and that made me cry when I realized that. Deep sort of cornflower blue type shade. Next we have Hatter, which is like a vibrant green with um, sort of green shimmer. Next is Gone Mad, which is like an eggplant purpley brown shade. I was disappointed that this wasn't a true purple, like a royal purple or a blue tone purple. Next is Paradox. This one's absolutely stunning. It's a vibrant orange with gold shift. Next is Cake, and it's a vibrant blue tone pink and it has silver shimmer. Next is Lily, and this is like a white pearl with a pink shift. It's another sort of duochrome shade. Then we have Duchess, which is a peach with a pink shift and pink sparkle. This is like a lighter version of Fireball, so it's not really quite a duochrome. It's more got like pink shimmer through it, but the two colors look really pretty together. I did swatch them together so you could see how, um, how what they look like. Next is Kingdom, which is a copper bronze pearl. This is an interesting shade, even with, for somebody like me who's not really particularly a fan of browns. This is Chessboard, and it's like a medium brown. I feel like it has like sort of orange or red tones to it as well. There's a lot of like orangey, reddish, brown type shades in this palette, which really kind of surprised me. Next up is Heads Will Roll. And to me, this is a vibrant turquoise green and it has gold shimmer, but it's like really subtle. I'm wearing it on my lid and you really can't tell that there's shimmer. Next is Bandersnatch and that is a deep teal matte and I'm wearing it on the hood of my eye. The next shade is Salazin Grun and this is like a metallic red type shade. Next is Royal Flush and to me, this is like a super pale pinky beige type shade. We have Time. This is an awesome like blackened navy blue shade. Uh, I used it on my lower waterline at the uh, upper and lower, like like the edge of the lash, like the, kind of like blends with the roots of the lashes. I love this sort of black navy blue color. I think it's beautiful. And it was one of the best colors in the palette. Then we have Dream On, which is a metallic purple silver. This was the worst color in the palette. It had basically no color payoff. It was like crumbly. I don't know what went wrong with this color, but it was super disappointing. Next is Chronosphere, and this is a metallic deep bronze. So it's like a bronzy brown. And last but not least is Mirror, and this is a gray taupe satin. So overall to me, this palette, which has 20 colors in it, was very heavily warm toned. Like I mentioned, there's a lot of like orange, orangey brown, uh, red, reddish brown type shades. And I was really kind of surprised because to me with the whole Alice the Looking Glass thing, 
the world is filled with vibrant colors. There are so many gorgeous visuals. Like, I, I don't know why you would want to just do all orangey browns, but it felt very, very, very neutral heavy, very warm heavy to me. You do have some pinks and cooler tones, which I like. And of course I love like the brights, the blues and the greens. The blues and the greens make me happy, but I was really unhappy to see all of the like tons of orangey colors. But that's just my personal preference because I'm kind of like overloaded on orangey neutrals. A lot of the matte shades on bare skin really just they performed poorly. They needed help. They really needed primer. On primer, they were fine. Heads will, heads will Roll was easy to use. Duchess and Paradox and Lily were great. So I really like those. As much as I love the packaging on this, you know, I'm not so sure that it's one of those palettes that you absolutely must go out and buy unless you're an Alice in Wonderland collector, which if you are, I totally understand because, you know, I have my American McGee's Alice. If you've never seen those. I have a ton of Cheshire Cats. I have been Alice in Wonderland obsessed pretty much my whole life. So for me, this was this is one of those things that I absolutely love and, and I look at it as something that I absolutely had to have. But I would say that if you're not a collector, you probably don't need this palette. I would say that if you are in love with five or more shades in this palette, you probably need it. If you don't love at least five shades in this palette, you shouldn't get it. If you are a collector, you will probably want it. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the lipsticks. Oh, and I forgot. This is the brush that comes with the palette. I love all of the Urban Decay double end brushes. I use them on a regular basis. The scent is soft and it's great for applying a crease shade or blending out colors in the crease. And this is sort of like a harder sh uh, brush that's more like a lid brush so you can pack on the color on your lid or you can apply color to your lower lid. That's how I use these brushes. So onto the lipsticks. I am wearing Erasabeth, which is the bright matte red. And the formula on this is great. It is a one swipe color and it's just on and I think it looks very gorgeous. The next color is Marana. I love this color. You definitely need a lip liner with it. I used it with OCC Black Dahlia. They match perfectly. It's a comfortable moisturizing formula to me so you really are going to want a lip pencil or a lip primer or something so that it doesn't slide around. And this is to me like a deep burgundy wine kind of color and it has like a little bit of tonal shimmer. So I think it's beautiful. That is one swipe of Marana. That is one swipe of Erasabeth. This is Mad Hatter, which is described as bright purple shimmer. I feel like it's kind of a violet purple and that's two swipes of color. This is one of those shades that I think it looks good layered on top of other colors. I would put it with like OCC's Hoochie or Urban Decay Bittersweet or Speedball. Next is Time, and this is described as a gunmetal navy with silver shimmer. And it's on the sheer side, but I think that makes it perfect for layering. That's one swipe. There's a couple more. So the last color we have is Alice, and I thought this was gonna be a boring color. So when I wore this, I thought it looked great. I was surprised, but it is described specifically as a sheer nude with pink shift. So that's three swatches of Alice on the back of my hand. The lipsticks are 18 each. I love them. Here's what the LE packaging looks like. It's very psychedelic. So the only thing I don't like about this, even though I like the color and the pattern, is that I don't like how it just kind of feels a little flimsy, just like the um, Urban Decay Gwen Stefani packaging. So it's pretty on the outside. It just doesn't feel very strong. And when I compare it to the Matte Revolution lipsticks or the normal Revolution lipsticks, I prefer that heavier tube because it just feels more luxurious. So overall, I'm pretty excited with the Urban Decay Alice Through Looking Glass collection. I absolutely love the lipsticks. I think that they're pretty awesome. The eyeshadow palette I'm torn on. The collector in me says, oh my god, yes. The makeup porter in me says, well, I don't know that I need it. If you already have a bunch of warm tone palettes, you probably don't need this palette. But if you are an Alice in Wonderland collector or you love the all the colors in the palette, you'll probably want it. I do think that you get a good value for the price because like I mentioned before, you're getting 20 eyeshadows that are almost full size for 60 bucks. And a normal, typical eyeshadow single from Urban Decay is now $19. It's not a bad deal at all. The collection launches on May 1st, UrbanDecay.com, and it will launch after that at the rest of the sites like Sephora, Macy's, Ulta, Beauty.com. But because it's limited edition and it's Alice in Wonderland, I expect it's going to sell out fast. So if you want it, I would snatch it up. Anyway, what do you think of the Urban Decay Alice Through the Looking Glass collection? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Do tell in the comments below. 
If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and share with a makeup loving friend. And if you haven't already, be sure you subscribe to my channel. I make new videos weekly. Thanks so much for watching.